In the recent boom of Neural Radiance Fields Research, aka NERF, we have seen many new advanced AI methods in generating realistic 3D sceneries or objects from less than 100 input images. The numerous accumulation of experiments and changes has given NERF-related research great improvements ranging from render quality, speed, to accuracy. <laughs> you know, it's a hot topic when I keep coming back to NERF over and over and over again. And once again, NERF tech has branched out into some pretty interesting use cases. In the past, we have seen that Nerf was able to potentially help video stabilization in extreme camera movements. And now, D squared Nerf proposed a method using Nerf to understand a 3D scene and segment or decouple dynamic objects and extract the static environment to perform tasks such as object removal, which are actually mind-blowingly good. Before, object occlusion or object removal were mostly being done in a 2D image processing fashion, which in terms limited the AI's understanding of the scene, thus affecting the performance. But what if object removal incorporates the understanding of the environment? The incorporation with Nerf is incredibly effective. Not only it can remove moving objects very accurately and extract the background environment, but also liquids. Yes, you heard it right. In this official demo, they recorded them pouring what looks like soy sauce into a box of water. While liquid seems to be an exhaustive task for an object removal, D squared Nerf made it like the water was never contaminated with soy sauce even in the presence of the bubbles. In the dynamic scene, you can see what the AI was able to extract from the static background, and look how accurately it was able to separate the soy sauce. Keep in mind, the table also has a light brown look too, so in the less contaminated region, you can still see some residue of the soy sauce. However, the soy sauce at the side of the box is barely removed. You can see the color clearly in the final frame. But this might be because the side of the box was barely in frame before the soy sauce was poured, so it really had no data on what the side of the box would have looked like in the prior clear state. On to the next nerf, if we can stylize images, then why can't we style nerf too? Stylized nerf takes in the input frames of a scene in a style image and renders a 3D scene incorporated with that style. Some really cool environments can then be generated, like some minimalistic black and white line styled room, sketch space looking environment, or just any oddly intriguing coloring that the style transfer was able to make. What would be different from this and your typical video filters is that there would be coherent structural understanding. While filters are only applied to a 2D image, stylized nerve knows the structuring of the environment thus can create very consistent style transfer, like the edge of the table would be painted white in all directions. And if it's just your typical image filters, it'll constantly flicker because it can only see it has a line that changes directions. This AI can potentially be incredibly beneficial official for game dev development or even animation backgrounds. When I first saw their official demos, I instantly thought of the art style of the game, Walking Dead. As of editing this video, this new research called Artistic Radiant Fields just came out. This is much crazier than stylized nerve, just look at these results. Why does new and great research always come out when I am done recording for a video about that topic? Maybe this is the sign for the rapid growth of AI research? Okay, just look at the stylized consistency for ARF. This is literally stylized nerf but next level. There's also a research called block nerf which I believe 2 minute papers covered already so I am not gonna go into it that much. The research focused on large scale nerf rendering where it can literally recreate the whole San Francisco with 2.8 millions of images. This is probably the most google map thing I've ever seen out of all of nerf research. But for Nerf to render this well in an environment, all the lights and illuminations probably need to be around the same level. And in the wild, aka the real world, data would probably be drastically different from each other. Then, there is this research that recently came out called Neural 3D Reconstruction in the Wild, which focuses on the problem where different levels of illuminations in the data can still be used to render the 3D object or scenery. This is done without having lighting problems that would easily affect the resulting render in other nerf research and retaining high quality 3D render of objects. This brings the idea of using Google Maps images to reconstruct the real world a lot closer, as real world data would always have 
daytime, nighttime, sunny day, cloudy day, which creates different illuminations on the scenery. So using tourist photos to recreate a 3D structure can be accomplished much easier than ever before. And yeah, that's it for today, but wait, quick question for you. Are you happy with your current job or career? Do you like going to work every day and see yourself doing what you're doing right now forever? If not, I'd like to share with you a little bit about the sponsor of this video, The Programmer Coach. The Programmer Coach is an online coding program that helps people learn how to code and get a high paying job as a software developer. Their program is unique in that they teach you how to code by doing through practice, which is truly the only way to learn any skill at the end of the day, right? Plus, they provide you with coding coaches to help you whenever you run into any issues. They also have career coaching and placement services where they work with you and help you get your first job as a software developer. And the best part? Their program is affordable and accessible for anyone and everyone. That's right, you won't pay the bulk of your tuition until you actually land a job as a software developer. To learn all the details you would ever need and get all of your questions answered, simply go to becomeaprogrammer.com. Once again, that is become a programmer.com. And thank you for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Luscellius, Chris Ledoux, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. If you have any questions, feel free to ask on my Discord too. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.